everybody. I don't have to introduce, oh, maybe I do. I don't, Carolyn, I don't know if you know me, but my name is Yael Fishman. I'm with the Life Enrichment Department. Um, so glad that everybody could join us today. Today, I am so happy to welcome Sarah Kane DaCosta to Active Aging Week here at John Knox Village. Sarah is the founder of Synergy Yoga Studio in Rock Hill, South Carolina, whose practice is founded on the personal understanding of the power of yoga to heal the body, the mind, and the spirit. She has been teaching for over two decades. She's also certified in teaching specialty populations such as Yoga Warrior International for active duty and veteran soldiers suffering from PTSD, Yoga for Depression, Yoga for Athletes, and Yoga for Cancer. Breath work is her favorite part of yoga, allowing the calm to settle the body and the mind. Today, Sarah will be telling us about the benefits of meditation and a little bit about the science behind it. And then she will also walk us through a meditation. Um, today is uh, a kickoff of a series. Sarah is going to be with us for the remainder of October once a week. Uh, she'll be with us on Thursdays. The next session after today will be Thursday, October 15th. And for that one, she's going to do an evening meditation at 7 p.m., which you are here, but I would encourage you to do it from home if you can, because you can lie down and I think you'll get the better, the, the better experience for it. Uh, and then for the last two Thursdays in October, she'll be here at 10 a.m. We'll do the same thing that we're doing here. So sit back and enjoy. I'm going to turn this over to Sarah. And Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me and, and good morning, everyone. I'm coming to you from my home in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's great to be here with you. And thank you for having me. And thank you for being open today, open and willing to explore the topic of, of meditation. And so today's session, I have a, a PowerPoint for us to, to walk through and just to kind of lay down the foundation of what meditation is and kind of demystify it and explain how we can make it um, accessible for, for all of us. And I would love to share with you a little bit about my background in uh, experiencing meditation. But before we do anything, because yoga and meditation are my background, we're going to take a little bit of a stretch, of course. <laughs> so wherever you are, whether you're at home or whether you're in the community gathering space, in your chair, let's try to find a tall spine and you know, the best that you can, right? And everything I mentioned today when we practice, everything is just a suggestion. So doing that, you may feel a little bit better and be able to breathe a little bit deeper. So getting that posture is key, which we'll talk about more later. And so from this space here in your seat, if you can, if it's available to you, you have this space, Maybe lift your arms up to the sky and you can lift them straight in front of you or you can sweep them out by your side or just go as high as you can or as low as you can. Either way, doesn't matter. Just maybe see if you can lift your arms and sit up tall as you can. Take a deep breath and then reach through your right fingertips and then reach through your left fingertips. Take another breath and then bring your arms down by your side. We'll take a gentle twist if that's okay for your body this morning. And first start by taking that gentle twist over your right shoulder. It can just be a little bit of a twist. You can keep your hands right on your legs or hold onto a chair. And then gently bring it back to center and we'll go to the other side, still continuing to breathe. And bring it back to the center. Good morning. <laughs> Gotta get a little bit of our morning stretch. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And we'll go ahead and go through the PowerPoint, the presentation. And I'd love for this to be interactive. I think we can communicate with each other. Some of you are at home 
You're welcome to type in any questions to me um, through the chat button or feel free to unmute yourself. I would love to hear from you. Um, this is, doesn't have to be a completely one-way communication. So I'd love to hear from you too, what your questions and what your experiences are. All right, looks like my screen, you can see, everyone can see my screen, right? With the introduction. Yep, we good? Cool. All right. So yes, this is our introduction to meditation for active aging. And I think everybody, you, I was introduced really well. So thank you. Let me change our page. So today, during our practice time with meditation, we're going to learn a breath work meditation. And in my opinion, learning to how to work with your breath is the foundation to any meditation practice. And so this is one of my favorite quotes. When you own your breath, nobody can steal your peace. And we'll talk a lot about that today, and I'll even explain some of the science behind that and what that means and how your body works with the breath. And it's a really amazing thing. It's so simple. I mean, we know that we breathe every day, of course, automatically. But the cool thing is, is that you can actually try to work with your breath to calm your nervous system down. And we're going to try that today. So I wanted to share a little bit more about me and my world, and they did a great job at introducing me today, but I, I wanted to give you a little bit more of the real deal as we get to know each other on this journey this month with the meditation practices. So um, this first picture over here with me, um, it is, I'm teaching yoga. I've been teaching yoga and meditation um, for over 20 years. I started practicing yoga and meditation close to, I guess about 23 years now. Um, and I started practicing when I was going through a challenging time in my life. I was going through a divorce. I had just had a baby. I just moved here to North Carolina. And so I used yoga and meditation practices to help me with things like sleeplessness, um, anxiety, and those emotions. And it really, really worked for me. And so ever since then, I've been committed to sharing those benefits to as many people as I could. And then in the center, there's my beautiful family. So my husband is that guy with the beard in the front. That's my husband, Benicius. And we have a beautiful international blended family. Uh, he is from Brazil. And this picture was us this Christmas in Rio de Janeiro. Up, if anyone's ever been there before, this is the uh, Sugar Mountain, Sugarloaf Mountain. My son is way in the back, that tall guy. Um, my two stepsons, my mother-in-law, and my brother, and my sister-in-law. So I, I have a great, fun family, and also part of my family are three dogs. So <laughs> I laugh about this because I, I became um, an empty nester, and all of our kids are out on their own now, and so I started adopting dogs. <laughs> And uh, I've had three dogs now, and that's it though, I promise, no more dogs. <laughs> um, so that's my Zelda, my Hank, and my Pupinha. And one of my favorite, my personal uh, mantras or my personal um, affirmation that I love to share is calm is my superpower. And I say that because a lot of times I think um, people think, calm is a weakness and I don't think it is. I think actually calm is a superpower because it's especially a superpower for your health and your wellness and your well-being. Calm doesn't in my book mean weakness, it actually means strength 
And as we go through this presentation, uh, I'll share a little bit more about what, what that means and why. Tom is truly uh, a superpower and it does really work to, for longevity of your wellness. So that's a little bit about me and my, my world. Now I can't see everybody, but um, it just, has anyone experienced meditation before? You got one in the crowd. One in the crowd. Okay, great. Two in the crowd. Two. Fantastic. And anyone, is that a current meditation practice that you have? I'm just curious. And, and no worries if it's not. I go to the fitness center every day at 830. Awesome. Our meditation system. Yes. I also attend uh, a couple of classes with the Kabbalah. Meditation Center in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, fantastic. I love it. So you definitely know the benefits. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, so one of the things about another great thing about meditation, did I miss somebody's comment? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so one of the things too that meditation tends to do is this quote here, if you want to change your problems, change your state of mind. And it's, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the science and how the science works with your brain. Um, in fact, it scientifically has been proven that we can actually work with um, our brain, right? Kind of rewiring, uh, for lack of a better word. And so, so how do we get there? So these are some of the things that kind of the path um, will take this morning is it will define and demystify meditation. We'll learn and practice breath work meditation today and then create a plan. You know, if this really is something that you feel like it would resonate with you, I've created a suggested plan for over the next week and how you could try to implement this into your day. And of course, we'll leave time at the end. If you have any questions or comments, I'll definitely be here to answer those questions the best I can. So a little bit about the definition on meditation. Here's a couple of points. Because I think sometimes, and we'll talk about the myths in just a moment, but we always, a lot of us who have never meditated before, we have this picture in our mind of what it is. And so I'd love to define it and demystify it a little bit to make it um, so that you realize it is something that everybody can do. Um, and, and it is easy and accessible. So it is a practice. Meditation is a practice and it's focusing the mind on a particular object, thought, or activity, right? So it helps to train your brain to have a focused attention on one thing. Right, and achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable balance. It's learning to go into our inner world, into stillness, and trying to withdraw from past or future thoughts or worries. Right, so this is just a kind of an open general definition of what it is. The biggest thing is to think about, it is a practice. It is not a perfect. Right? It's a practice for life. Even for someone like me who's been practicing for over 20 years, I'm human too. And I have my days where my meditation practice isn't how I'd like it to be. So it is a practice for life. And so it is the focus you know, where we try to focus on a particular object, thought, or activity. And over this next month with us together, we're going to try all so, several different types of meditation 
to help expose you to a variety of ways to meditate. And it will allow you the opportunity to, to, to figure out what you like, what you don't like, and, and what you might stick with. So it'll give you the opportunity to experience lots of different ways or use them all. <laughs> so this is a little bit about the myths. And I put this picture of, of, of the man meditating in the mountain because I think this, when I talk to people about meditation over the years, this is what a lot of people think. Like the only way to meditate is go up onto a mountain and sit up there for days upon days in silence. Okay, so yes, that is a way to meditate. <laughs> there are, matter of fact, I, I, um, there is a meditation location in Florida where they do do silent retreats for uh, about two weeks, I believe it is. So there are, yes, there are definitely, that is an option for people to meditate in silence. However, I'm going to give you practical daily ways that you can weave into your regular life. You don't have to go away. Another myth is it takes too long. Right. Well, today I want to give you a, the breathing meditation that literally you can do it in five to 10 breaths and you're done and you'll shift. Most of us will have a little bit of shift. So I hope over the next four weeks to, to share that with you that give you those easy ways. Some folks think it's hard and complicated. I'm here to demystify that too. And not make it hard. The goal is to clear your mind. So one thing I asked when I first started meditating, one of my mentors, I said to her, when do those thoughts in my mind ever stop? And she said, guess what? They don't. Great. <laughs> and so really what she's saying is that this meditation or even yoga or any kind of movement, if you have other movement, it just will help. It gives you a tool. It gives you a tool to shift your brain away from those patterns of thinking, of worry, of fear, et cetera. So they, don't, they may slow down over time, but you're, so the, it is very normal to still have thoughts, of course, weave in and weave out when you meditate. It's just learning how to manage those thoughts. You have to sit. You can sit in meditation, but I'm gonna show you, actually I'll even show you today um, some other ways to position your body uh, for meditation. You do not have to sit. You can stand, you can lay down, you can move, you can get as comfortable as you want to get. Okay. It is for everyone. It is just about for everyone. The only real contraindications, um, most meditation, and like the one we're going to do today with the breath, it is safe for everyone. There are some types of meditation that may trigger a person who has um, like veterans, veterans with uh, PTSD um, and other like anxiety related, it may trigger. So with the ones that we're going to be doing are not and should not be any way in that way. And the breath work one today is, is for really for everybody. So those are the only cautions right there. Um, one last one that's a big one is it is some folks think it is a religious practice. In some religions, meditation is part, um, just like in prayer, prayer is consider, can be considered meditation. Um, the, and the options that I'll be sharing with you over this month have absolutely nothing to do with religion. They have everything to do with working with our body and the way that our body is designed to work. Okay. Questions? So, 
so five key benefits. We have to talk about the benefits. We demystify. Let's talk about some of the key benefits. There's lots of benefits, but I pulled out some five key benefits for active aging and how meditation works with your body, which is, I think, really fascinating. Um, memory. So it helps with memory. The two parts of your brain that are uh, hubs for short-term and long-term memory are activated during meditation. So it could perhaps help with memory recall, including retrieving lost memories. Number two, the digestive system works better. And we'll even talk about this more in two weeks. Um, I know you're working with my friend, Chef Carol Green with some fabulous, she's giving some fabulous cooking demos and, and recipes this week. And so with those wonderful, healthy foods and recipes, working with these deep breathing exercises will actually help your organs, including the stomach, to digest those wonderful immune boosting foods that she's sharing with you. So it's definitely a helpful tool for digestion which then aids with the immune system, healing lungs, improving circulation. Activates the happy part of your brain. <laughs> Yay! So it stimulates the feel good. It's such a great tool to integrate with your wellness um, for getting the happy part of your brain going. Four, sharpens and focuses the mind. Okay, it also right, works with both sides of your brain. Brain possible function improvement, more focus. And the last but not least, a stress reliever, right? And, and you know, we all know we're in a very strange time in our world history, history right now with the pandemic. So, um, more than ever, these practices are so, so, so critical to help um, with and, and be part of your, your toolkit for your wellness, right? And I love that many experts believe meditation is the fountain of youth. All right, we're almost getting to our practice. This here, for those of you who like science, I love both this, the science part of this, the, the practice part of this. This, any, um, some of you may know the, this, this uh, vagus nerve, especially if you've been in the, the medical field in your career. This breath meditation that we're about to work with, okay, is triggering a nerve in your body called the vagus nerve. And probably everyone is aware our, our nervous system has many, many sides to it, but there's the, in general, we have fight or flight side of our nervous system, right? That's the part of the nervous system, like that ancient part, our prehistoric brain, right? Wants to run away, right? We're not fighting lions, tigers, and bears anymore, so we don't really need that, but that prehistoric brain is still there when we have that fight or flight part of our nervous system. And then the other part of the nervous system is rest and digest. That's the calming part of our nervous system. That's the part that helps us digest our food well, that helps us think clearly. That's the calm is my superpower, right? So we have just to go into fight or flight. This is so cool. You actually can learn how to work with your breath to trigger this vagus nerve to bring your body down into calm, that rest and digest. The vagus nerve, I kind of found a picture, a um, hand-drawn picture 
It comes from the back of your skull and it makes its way down the spinal cord. And it has all these little webs that go out. Those little webs are into your organs. And so those webs, those nerve webs go into the heart, the stomach, the intestines. And so this three part breathing that we're about to practice, it's going to, it stimulates the vagus nerve and it can activate your relaxation response, reducing heart rate, blood pressure, and potentially lowering stress. So it's amazing. There's a lot in, in our nervous system that we are unable to control. But the breath is the one thing that we can perhaps learn how to control. And the practice that I'm about to introduce to you today comes from the yoga philosophy, comes from the, the big picture of yoga, and it's called three-part breath. And the ancient yogis believed that if you can regulate your breath, then you can control your mind. They kind of knew something before science could even prove it to us. Everybody okay? Questions? No okay. Question. All right. Well, I'm going to turn my slide. Oops, 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 oops. Let me turn this PowerPoint off. I want to come right back to you, although I keep hitting the wrong button. One moment, and we are going to practice. Okay. I think we're back to just me, right? Yep. Cool, thank you. Thanks for bearing with me with technology. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna take off those instructions off the screen and I'm just gonna guide us through um, this three-part breathing practice a couple of times. And but before we do, I would love to show you some different ways that you could position your body so you know some of you are at home and some of you are in the are together and and so if you're in a chair chair is perfect as well you can sit in a chair if you are at home and would like to reposition yourself i'm going to show you a couple setups i have my little yoga space behind me and so i'm going to get up and show you and make sure I got that right. Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple things you can do if you're at home and when you do go home too. So I'll show you one way I like to meditate by lying down. And I've got a pillow. I have a pillow here with me today. And I will show you. I like to create myself a little bit of a recliner. So what I have here, these are yoga blocks, but you don't need yoga blocks. You can use, you can use some other additional pillows or blankets. If you do like lying down and it's okay with you, for your back, you could lie down and create yourself a recliner. I'll show you. And actually, this is the way that I would recommend when we meet next Thursday for the evening meditation. If you can lie down, I would highly recommend lying down. So there's my little recliner. And then you bring yourself right up to the back of it and lie on down. And you can do this on, the, on your floor, on your couch, on a bed. You can bend the knees. And keep the feet on the ground or your bed or your couch. You can lie down like this. You can sit. You can also, and I'll show you this one next week. I didn't bring a chair in here with me today, unfortunately. But you can also bring a chair and put your legs up on a chair. So pretend my shins are up on a chair. Okay? So those are just some of the options that you could choose to position your body. So it doesn't have to be in this 
straight upright position the whole time. Doesn't have to be. It's up to you. And the other thing is you can move your body. So if, if you feel uncomfortable in one position, just move, shift. It's no problem. So I'll let you get in a comfortable position. And if you are in your chair, you know, come back to that long spine, right? With the ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Try to, you know, think about that, that good posture. The reason for that is because when we start to slouch over a lot, your rib cage starts to kind of clamp down and round over the lungs and a diaphragm. So if you can think about trying to sit up the best that you can, the best that you can, as long as it doesn't strain or force your body into position. If you can sit, you might notice that you can breathe a little bit better because the, the rib cage is lifted off of your organs, your to the ribs, up into the chest. So that's three parts, belly, ribs, and chest, okay? That's why it's called three part. Now, all of us have a different lung capacity. And so when I start guiding this meditation for us, your pace and rhythm may be completely different than what I'm cueing. And that is okay, that's no problem. My words are just a guide, that's all. It's not the standard. It doesn't have to be the pace that I guide. It's just, just to help give you tips, okay? Think of it that way, just a guide. One other thing before we start is your eyes. What to do with your eyes. Some people like to close their eyes during meditation, and that is totally fine. If that helps you, feel free to close your eyes. It's not mandatory. If you keep your eyes open, I do recommend having a focal point, something that you enjoy that you could look at, like maybe a picture that you like or maybe a trinket, maybe a shell from the ocean, something that, that brings you happiness. And so something that you can fix your gaze on. I'll let someone else in. So I will guide this a couple different ways. And you're welcome to close your eyes because I'm not gonna be doing anything that you need to see. I'm only going to be doing things that you would need to hear. So you can close your eyes if you would like, if that feels safe and comfortable for you. The other thing about this breath is to consider breathing in and out of the nose. If this is not possible, don't worry about it. The reason for breathing through the nose is the nose is a natural filter from it toxins in the air. And you could choose to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. That's fine too. Whatever allows your body to breathe in an easeful way, an unforced way in an unrushed way. So as you settle here into the position, whether you're seated or you're lying down at home, either way, eyes to open or eyes closed, just start to feel your body start to relax into your seat. And then I'll start to guide us through three-part breath. 
and where you can always stop at any time and just listen. You can benefit by listening as well. If you're seated, you can rest your hands in your lap or by your side. And then we'll think about breathing together. Think about the breath, the in-breath starting in the belly. So breathing in, letting the breath flow, expanding the belly. And then up into the ribs and into the chest. On the exhale, on the out breath, the chest moves from the chest to the ribs to the belly. Inhale, breath moves from the belly, ribs, chest. Exhale from the chest, ribs, belly. You can also think about it as counting. So we inhale, breath, for a count of three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhale, breathe for three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Breathe here on your own for a breath or two, quiet. So the inhale breath is that wave coming into the shore. And the exhale breath, the out breath, is the wave going back out into the vast wide open sea. Inhale, breathe in like that rolling wave into the shore. Exhale like that way of rolling back out into the sea. One more, let that wave come crashing into the shore. Exhale, let the wave roll back out to the sea. Breathe here for just a few more breaths. Starting your day today, grounded. Bringing in a sense of ease. So the rest of your day just flows like a gentle breeze. And take another gentle, easeful breath in. And a longer breath out, gently releasing the breath. And if your eyes are closed, Go ahead and gently allow them to slowly open to let the light back in. And 
And if you're at home lying on your spine, perhaps coming back to a seated position. And we'll all take a little bit of a stretch. So when you get back to your seat with the eyes opened, inhale, lift the arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. And exhale, bring your hands back down by your side or onto your lap. And welcome back. How do you feel? So. We both feel very light. I, yeah, I know. Everyone's like, that's so good, right? That is meditation. You just meditated today. So if you've never meditated before, welcome. You did it. Yes. It is that easy and you know, that simple. And it would just breathing, just with focused attention, breathing, that is meditation. So let me, just a couple more little points, not science points anymore, but I, um, I'm going to switch us back over briefly to the presentation. If there's one or two other things I'd love to share, and then I'll, I'll leave us with a meditation again. Um, and I have a little sheet for you that you're going to get today um, to help start you on this journey. If you noticed a difference already in just those few minutes, I have a little plan for you for the week and how you can in implement some recommendations. And also to share you know, what to do, what do you do if you get stuck, right? Because I'm not gonna be with you all week. I would love to be. <laughs> One of the things is if you're feeling forceful, like if you start to feel um, stress across your shoulders and in your neck or your head, that might mean that you're that the, you're trying to force the breath and just take a pause. Just try later, right? And and think about just relaxing the muscles. And we talked about this shift positions. If you become uncomfortable, shift. You could do that breath. You can stand. You can stand up and do it. No problem. And this is one of my favorites, the two words, not now. And I tell myself in my brain, I'm talking to myself in my brain, not now. And try to let that thought shift away, like that wave in the ocean. Let the wave in the ocean take that thought away. And have patience with yourself, right? For many of you, this is new. You never really paid attention to how you breathe. I get it. So this this could be very new to actually, oh my gosh, pay attention to my breath. What? So have patience and be gentle with yourself about it, right? It's a new mindset and perhaps new results. And you've got this. You can do this. And each week when we see each other on Thursdays, we're going to continue to build on what we're learning. So next week when we see each other on Thursday again, we're going to breathe in. So we'll keep trying it. So I applaud you for being here and showing up and taking care of your health. It's a beautiful quote from Dr. Andrew Weil. There's no single more powerful or simpler daily practice to further your health and well-being than breath work. And then lastly, I'm not going to cover this completely because I want to lead us into another little breath work. I'll leave us with breathing again. But you will receive today, um, I'm not sure how it's going to get to everyone at home, but I, I, I emailed this. Um, this is an action step plan is, is to how to start to implement 
this practice over the next week. And one of the suggestions, you could do this today or tomorrow. If you have a sticky note or any kind of little notepad in your home, um, place, place the word breathe on it. Write the word breathe on it and stick it somewhere in your home in common areas where you look up. So like maybe in the, notice where you look. When you wake up in the morning, notice where you first gaze, where your eyes first go and stick that, stick that sticker there, breathe. Those little reminders, stick them all over your house if you need to. And then there's a daily suggestion um, practice. You know, try it in the morning, try it in the evening, try it in the day. See what works for you. Add music, add your, your, your uh, favorite calming music. Add music, right? Put, put music on in your home and try this breathing. Yeah, feel free. And then of course, show up for our next session next Thursday at 7 p.m. The one at 7 p.m. next week. There's our, there are our next sessions. I listed them for us. And I think you have them too, of course. Um, next one is uh, body scan relaxation. So we'll talk about how you can actually go through the different muscle, larger muscle part, uh, muscles in your body and consciously try to relax those muscles and learn like where your body holds that stress. So I want, that will be a fully guided, I'm gonna, uh, there'll be no lecture, like no PowerPoint. I'm just gonna guide us through the next few, okay? So I hope to see you next, next Thursday at seven. And I'm gonna close us out with that breath work again. So settle yourself in. We close the eyes for a moment. We connect with our three part breath. And breathe in for a count of three. Two, one, and exhale out longer if you can for four, three, two, one. Breathe on your own for another breath. Having so much gratitude for your, for you today and your strong, healthy body and mind. And may you all have an amazing day. Find a little bit of good today. And I thank you so much for your attention and being here this morning. And I am here for questions. If you'd like to ask anything, gently flutter your eyes open when you're ready. And I've placed my contact information on the screen. Um, I am happy, I, you have my phone number, my email address. If you have questions directly for me that you'd like to talk about, um, I also do, um, I also work with private clients over Zoom. Uh, if you have specific things that you would like to work on, we can definitely work on a plan for that. So thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you and I hope to see you next Thursday at seven. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. And I'll hang out here if anyone has questions. I'm right here. For anyone who was in the auditorium today, I gave you the handout. Um, if you were on Zoom, I will uh, I'll try to figure out by the Zoom report who was on this call, and uh, and I will email you this this list that Sarah sent us uh, about steps we can take throughout the week. Does anyone in the auditorium have any questions for Sarah? Okay.
was beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. You're so, welcome. Thank you. So easy to do and so valuable. I know, right? There's calm is now your superpower. I think we could all use that in our bag of tricks to carry around throughout the day. Oh, yes, absolutely. I use it even in the dentist office. <laughs> in places like this, I'm always like, hold on a second. And before you do anything, let me breathe. Yeah. I guess that concludes today. If nobody has any questions, thank you so much, Sarah. Come on. You're so welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank what you. was your email, Sarah? Oh, sure. Let me pop it back up for you. You got it. Let me oh. hang on one sec. Let's see. Sarah at. Let me get you there. There it is. No, uh, I. What does that say? Sarah at Rising Stronger. Rising Stronger. Yep. Right? H E R. Yep. That's my new business, actually. S R O N G H E R. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, everyone. I'll see you next Thursday. Okay, thank you. Thank you.